you need to be very careful while on these websites because not all ads are from genuine landlords. Some may come from scammers whose intention is to steal your identity or your money. If you have clicked on this video, then you're probably curious or you want to know how to quickly find a place to live, either because you're planning to move to Germany or you are already here and haven't yet found a long-term place to live. So in this week's videos, yes, videos, in a two-part series this week, I'm going to briefly explain why finding a place to live in major cities in Germany can be pretty difficult, particularly for foreigners. And then in part two of this series, I will give the nine tips that helped me to quickly find a place to live once I landed in Germany. For this particular video, it's very important that you watch the whole video because the points build into one another. And if you skip certain parts of the video or don't watch continuously to the end, some of the points won't really make sense. But before we get started, today's video was actually requested quite a few times by some of my subscribers. And as always, if you have any video requests, kindly write them down in the comment section below and I will try and make a video as soon as possible. Lastly, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for the support thus far. As you can see, we are almost at 300 subscribers and honestly, I am just grateful. Let's keep the momentum going and get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2024. Let's get started. What I mean when I say do adequate research is that even before you start looking for houses online, you need to search for important information about the city you are moving to, such as the market rate for renting different types of accommodation, for example, the cost of renting a one-bedroom apartment versus a room in a shared apartment. Two, the most and least safe parts of the city to live in, Three, you need to be aware of areas that have sufficient amenities such as supermarkets as you don't want to have to travel five kilometers just to get groceries. And finally, four, you need to know how well connected certain areas are when compared to others. This is particularly important due to the number of frequent public transportation strikes in Germany of late. So in case the buses are on strike, is there an alternative means of transportation available? With the help of the internet and platforms such as YouTube, you can easily get this kind of information and a lot more by searching online. Once you have enough information about the city you are moving to, you need to set a maximum amount of money that you are willing to pay as rent based on your income or on your savings. An ideal situation is where your monthly rent is less than 40% your monthly income, but that's usually easier said than done because some cities are just way more expensive than others and you will be forced to pay more for rent. Also, you need to be aware that in Germany, there are two types of rents. There is cold rent, which is the amount that you pay only for the space. And then there is warm rent, which includes other amenities such as heating, electricity, water, radio tax, internet, and so on. So let's say you're a student on a blocked account and you're getting 934 euro every month you are automatically forced to look for a room in a shared apartment where you will be paying between 450 and 500 euro per month. But just be careful to know whether that amount that you will be paying as rent is either cold or warm rent. Once you have all the adequate information about the housing market in your city, and have set your realistic budget, there are three websites you can search on in order to try to find a place to live. These are Vegege Sucht, eBay, and Immobilien Scout. You need to take time and create profiles on some or even 
all of these websites. Just be aware that the better looking your profile is, the higher your chances of getting called for house viewings are. You do not need to give a lot of information about yourself. You just have to have a good profile picture, a good bio and a good message template to send to potential landlords. Here is a sample template that you can use as a beginner guide to help you create your own template that you can use to apply for accommodation to various houses. Let me be honest, you need to apply to as many advertisements as you possibly can because as I said in part one of this two-part series, the moment an ad is placed on any of the three websites that I have just mentioned, just be aware that in about 10 minutes, over 50 people will have already sent messages asking to rent. So you need to be very quick to apply. Like in my case, I wasn't even checking what the house was looking like. Minutes within an ad being placed, I would go, put my template message and immediately send the request to rent. After that, I would go back to refreshing the websites, waiting for new ads to be posted. Another pro tip, landlords tend to post on the hour, like 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., you get the point. So I would log on to the website around three minutes before the hour mark, search and apply for houses for only about 10 minutes max, send three to five requests and stop searching. Otherwise, you would waste so much time on the website waiting for new adverts to be posted. In case a landlord messaged me back, I would then get an email notification and would begin to communicate back and forth with the landlord. You need to be very careful while on these websites because not all ads are from genuine landlords. Some may come from scammers whose intention is to steal your identity or your money. Once you send a request expressing your interest in renting a house, the only thing that a landlord who likes your application should send you is a date time and an address for the house viewing appointment. You should not send any money, copy of your passport or visa or any other information before seeing the house and receiving a rental agreement. In fact, the moment such a request for personal information or money is made, immediately report that particular account so that it is banned. Also, do not accept to take any communication to an alternative platform such as email, WhatsApp, or Telegram. That is usually a major red flag that you may be dealing with scammers. Lastly, under any circumstances, do not click any link sent by a landlord for whatever reason. If a legitimate landlord asks you when you are next available for a house viewing, please put aside all your other non-essential plans and give availability as soon as possible because the more people the landlord sees before you, the harder it will be for you to stand out. Choosing to go early and making a good impression can be the difference between you getting accepted or being rejected. Also, don't be late for your house viewing appointment because everyone shortlisted is given a fixed amount of time. So being late to your own appointment puts you at a disadvantage as you have less time to build rapport with your landlord. And it just makes you look as if you're not a serious candidate. Because you are planning to rent a house in Germany, you can't really avoid dealing with paperwork. So you need to be prepared with the appropriate documentation. It is best to have both physical and digital copies of your personal documents. For example, if you are a student, you should have a copy of your enrollment certificate or another commonly asked document is your shufa. It is better to have 
and not need these documents, rather to need and not have them. Before signing any rental agreement, please make sure that you understand all the terms of your contract, such as the minimum rental duration, the deposit amount, the cold and warm rent amounts, and any other extra fees that you may need to pay because you're living there. Keep in mind that whatever you agree to by signing a contract can be used against you later down the line in case issues arise. So if you're not sure about anything, please ask for clarification before signing. One good thing about Germany is that the law protects tenants very well. So when it comes to issues such as rent control, maintenance and repairs, notice periods, deposit protection and dispute resolution, there are mechanisms in place to deal with these problems when they arise. But in order to benefit from these legal mechanisms, tenants have to do their own due diligence and educate themselves on these legal rights. And there you have it. If you have found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, bye bye!